over the course of the long season, I'd asked Mike Sullivan about Jeff Carter. I'd asked Sullivan about Brian Dumoulin. I'd asked Sullivan about potential lineup changes and players who are making mistakes time and again. But it never really came to a head quite like it did the other night in New York. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates where you found this. The Penguins got swept slash smoked up at the Garden Thursday and Saturday by the Rangers by scores of four to two and then yee, six to nothing. And after watching both Carter and Dumoulin make repeated errors that directly, directly led to New York goals. I had this question for the head coach after the game Saturday night. Michael, this is kind of low-hanging fruit. I asked it respectfully. Carter and Dumo have uh, been on the ice for a lot of goals against for a while now, including a couple of pretty big mistakes in the first period. What are you seeing that keeps them in the lineup? Yeah, I, you know, you guys like to pick on certain guys, right. you know, when you go to them all the time. And, um, you know, we respectfully disagree with you in a lot of circumstances, you know. Um, when, when goals are scored, we, we, we look at a lot of the details on, on the hows and the whys. And it's and the reality is, is it's it's more than one person for the most part when, when goals end up in the back of your net. And so, you know, I think those are, uh, you know, th- those are easy guys to pick on. But I will tell you is, is, you know, all year long, we've put them in difficult circumstances. Uh, those guys play against uh, top players in defensive situations all the time. Defensive starts. Yes. You know, Cards is uh, going into tonight's game is sixth in the league in faceoff percentage. Sixth overall in the whole league. He wins a lot of faceoffs. You know, we win the faceoff. We don't get we don't get the blue line. We don't gain the blue line. There's a number. There are a number of circumstances that are involved there. It's not just any one guy. So uh, what I would say to you guys is, I think it's it's easy for you guys, you know, to pick on one or two guys. And and what I will tell you is, is that I respectfully disagree with all of you. And uh, and you know there there are some there are some, uh, you know are we making some mistakes? Sure. Uh, but when you get put in those situations as often as those guys do. You know, there was a stretch of uh, there was a stretch of 20 games leading up to the last little while here where they were doing a pretty admirable job in that same circumstance. So, um, you know, I, I understand your question, um, but I, but I, I think I think the answer to the question is a little bit deeper than than just scratching the surface like you guys do. It, it's never any one guy's fault when those types of things happen. It's it's a team game out there. There's, there's six guys on the ice. And it, it's it's all of those guys' responsibility to execute. And uh, and we didn't do it in, in certain situations. There's a lot to unpack there. There's a lot I could nitpick. There's a lot that I could outright counter and very, very easily. I'm not going to do that today. I'm not going to do that. The head coach is the one putting himself in this situation. The head coach is the one who's playing these guys. The head coach is the one who is justifying playing these guys based on what you just heard. And you're free to make your own judgments on that. You've heard enough from me on this subject. No one needs to hear it again. That's his point of view. That's why I asked the question to get his point of view. That's also the only reason I ask the question for those who have either seen, heard, or read this before over the weekend and thought, wow, tough question, way to go, woohoo, yeah, good job, keep asking him that. That's not what reporters do. My job, the job, that night at the garden, as I was heading downstairs to go to the locker rooms, was to write a column. My column's subject matter was going to be Carter and Dumoulin. Again, 
So I asked a question that was pertinent to the subject matter of the column. That's how the business works. We're not angry fans. We're not in there to taunt or to uh, heckle or <laughs> whatever else some people seem to have in their heads about what we should be doing at press conferences or in interviews. We're not there to make the person that we're interviewing love us. We're not there to make them hate us. We're not there to make them squirm. We're not there to make them feel the wrath of the public or whatever. We're just there to ask questions. I asked a question. You heard the answer. Let me step back from this with a broader view, if I can. Regardless of what you think, of Sullivan's answer, regardless of what you think of some of the specifics within it, regardless of what you think of his intonation. And for the record, I had no problem with the latter. I thought the answer was as passionate as I would expect coming from someone of his personality. The aspect that came across to me most powerfully in the moment is that he's not giving in on this. This has become, and you could hear it, personal, meaning personal between him and two players he both trusts and admires. And within that, he's willing to do whatever it takes to stay loyal to them. Now, I've been telling you this for weeks, so there shouldn't be any surprise to anyone who's a regular listener of this program. Now you have heard it directly from the man. And the counterintuitive components to this whole scenario are so far through the roof that I can't even recognize this head coach in this phase. Because on one hand, he is that guy who will do anything to support his team, to support his players, to support his leadership, to support Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin and Chris Letang. And he hates losing, hates it, takes it very, very badly, almost as badly as he takes the wins well. He's all about the W and the L. And yet there's this, there's this. And no one's getting hurt by this. Not the players, not the fans, not anybody more than him. Because this is squarely on him. Whether he's right or he's wrong, whether you agree or you disagree, this is squarely on him. And he's put it there and he won't let it budge. When we come back, J1Q. This segment's brought to you by Family Table, a local company that brings delicious food to busy families. They offer family-style complete meals or a la carte items like lean proteins, perfect for muscle building and weight loss. If you aren't local, gift cards are also available for your Pittsburgh-based family and friends. Go to FamilyTablePGH.com and use the code DK20 for 20% off and free delivery on your first order. We're by noon today for Thursday delivery. Today's J1Q comes from Ty, who says, DK, at one point, is someone held accountable for this team's failures? And who is it going to come down to? The players, Ron Hextall, Mike Sullivan, heads got a roll at some point, right? Well, No. No, they don't. If this season has shown us anything, it's that accountability means next to nothing when it comes to this version of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And believe it or not, I'm not even saying that in the uh, old school, somewhat cliched context. I mean that there is literally no accountability because where does accountability start? Right. The very top. Who owns the franchise? Fenway Sports Group. Who's either seen or heard from a single individual even peripherally associated with FSG over the course of this winter? Anybody? I mean, other than people in Boston. No? Okay. Well, that's where it starts. 
And from there, go down to the player level. Players aren't accountable because the head coach has favorites. If you're a young player, you're very much accountable. Every shift matters. Every shift is measured. And there's an action taken relative to your performance. But as long as you're in the league for X number of years, whether you're Brock McGinn, Kasperi Kapanen, Teddy Bluger, it took months, months for anything to be done. And nothing has been done related to the two worst players at their respective positions on the roster, and Carter and Dumoulin. And nothing's going to be done. Because again, now it's personal. Now, if he were to do something, he'd be admitting defeat, meaning Sullivan. Who does Sullivan answer to? Well, he answers to Hextall and to Brian Burke. Hextall hasn't been held accountable, meaning with his job, for some spectacularly ill-advised moves in the course of his tenure here, uh, not least of which now is kind of leaping to the forefront uh, more than ever is the Mikhail Grandland trade, picking up $5 million of that guy. You barely even notice him on the rink. I, I've liked Grandland over the course of his career, okay? And I told you guys I thought you'd like him too as a player, and maybe there will be some kind of comfort level at some stage of his tenure in Pittsburgh, but one way or another, I'm not seeing $5 million there, and I did say that at the beginning. You're not going to see a $5 million value. Who's he answering to? Well, he's answering to Burke. Burke is in lockstep with Hextall. And I mean that in reality, like physical reality. The two of them move everywhere together. It's actually kind of neat to witness. They're really, really tight. But that does not necessarily mesh well with the concept of accountability. Because they agree on everything and Hextall's messed up a lot of things. So what kind of accountability are you looking for? Are you looking for somebody to replace Burke? Who's going to do that? The team is ownerless. Where can accountability start? You know, I, I could throw out the name of Sidney Crosby, and I could say that here's someone who is in the unique, and I'm using the term in its most literal way, unique, the French for one. Only Sid could do this. If Sid piped up, everything would change. But then... Think of it from Sid's standpoint. He spent an entire lifetime not doing anything like that. And who did he be piping up at the expense of? Dumoulin, one of his best friends and a fellow two-time champion, driving him into retirement or something? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I don't even think he thinks it to begin with. But if he did, it's not going to happen. There's no mechanism for accountability in anything I just described to you, shy of FSG remembering that they bought a hockey team. That's it. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. I'll be at PPG Paints Arena tonight covering Penguins versus Senators. That's a 7.08 p.m. faceoff.